So now that those notches are cut out, test the fit, make sure we have good movement and everything and, and uh, a nice fit. That one's good. And our linkage, we've got some movement and stuff there, so we're good there. Now, I want to go ahead and take the linkage over to the uh, sander and I want to just round over these edges. Now, I don't want to lose any of the length but I just want to knock off these corners and round them over. And all I'm using for a sander is just a belt sander turned upside down just to round over these edges. So with that piece done, now I want to do the same thing with the plunger. This little plunger piece here, I want to go ahead and round over one end of it. Alright, to connect the uh, linkage to the arm and to the plunger and all that, I'm using quarter inch steel rod that I'm going to be cutting pieces off of for the pins. Now, I've got in my drill press a quarter inch bit to correspond with that. And I've set up a little uh, stop block and everything so I could drill both the plunger and the uh, link at the same time let me show you what I've done for spacing and everything okay the first thing I did was to set up my mark uh, for drilling now my mark is in the center at 3 8 of an inch and then from the edge at 5 16 of an inch in and that's going to be my drill mark and first thing I did was set the fence up and the drill bit for that next we're gonna drill the plunger side uh, first so I've got my plunger that will fit in here like this and for spacing I cut a small scrap piece of quarter inch plywood that will fit in there and when everything is pressed up nice and tight this is up against the fence as well pushed forward that way uh, I've set a stop block there so I can keep everything in line and I can go ahead and drill my holes like that Alright, so now that I have the holes drilled for this side, for the linkage and the plunger, I'm not going to drill this side just yet. This is going to get drilled on the handle, but we'll do that after the fact. Right now, we need to go ahead and take our other piece and our handle and get that drilled. Now for the tail block, or the head block and the handle, basically I want the handle flush with the back side that's going to be up against the fence. And I want it flush out here. So since I have a little bit of spacing there to make it easier for you guys to follow along, I just took a piece of paper and folded it up so it would fit in there. And when it's spaced, that would give me a nice flush line. So now I can push this up against the fence, get my piece in line up against the fence. I reset my stop block to hold everything in place there. My hand is pushing up against that stop block, and I've got my drill bit centered. Uh, I didn't move the fence position or anything. It's still the same from the last drilling we just did. And uh, we are set back from this edge here, the front edge, uh, 7 sixteenths of an inch. And then, of course, we're centered at 3 eighths of an inch in between here, and that's where we're going to be drilling. Just had to flip it over because it barely went didn't make it to the other side so I just flipped it over and finished off the hole all right I promise you we're almost done guys it's now just a matter of putting everything together first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the uh, tail piece go ahead and glue and screw it on uh, flush with the back and of course it's three inches wide the same width as the base so just make sure the sides are flushed up and everything uh, go ahead and when you have it all set, just glue and screw it. Screw it from the bottom just like you did the back pieces. And then we'll move Okay, forward. now the screws for this back piece, they're an inch and a quarter long, not an inch and a half like we did before. Uh, because this is only an inch and a half, we don't want to blow it out through the other side. Once again, as I said, make sure you pre-drill, countersink your screws. And it only takes two. The glue is going to do a lot of the work. The screws are just kind of to reinforce it. So now we have that in place. I went ahead uh, out of my quarter inch rod. 
I cut three pins. The first pin is a little bit longer and basically I just span the whole width. Uh, it, I made it about three and three eighths inches long uh, just to, so I have a little bit of overhang uh, on each side, you know, where it hangs out. And the other two pins are the same width, are a little bit longer than the width of our link for both sides. So that's the other two pins. All right. So now with that, we can go ahead and take our handle. And one thing I did on the handle, on the opposite side of the hole, I went ahead and cut off that corner and just rounded the whole thing over. Put a radius at the end. Very simple on the sander. I just whipped that corner off and then just rounded it over. So we have a nice little profile. And this will give it some room for movement and stuff. Now, of course, that arch that where we cut off the corner, that goes in the back. It's the same way. It lines up the same way when you drilled it. And from there, we can go ahead and press our pin into place. Now these pins are tight. Uh, the steel pins and everything are tight, so you can use a clamp to press everything together. From there, make sure I didn't press it all the way through, just in case I have to pull it back out, because I want to make sure that I have movement in my arm. Uh, and that I, did, I rounded off that nose just enough. Uh, that's why you round it off, is, uh, so the corners don't catch or anything like that. You want plenty of movement. So I can tell that I need to do a little bit more rounding over on the front side here, on the front side down below. So I'm going to pull this pin out and uh, round it over a little bit more because I want my arm to be able to pretty much go all the way forward. It's not going to go that far forward in the press, you know, when pressing, but I want to be able to have that movement. All right, a little bit of uh, sanding on that front edge there, and now I have full movement and that's what I want. From there we've got our three little pieces here uh, which are the two side supports for the plunger and then just the little top cap and we're gonna put those on next but first what I want to do is I want to set the plunger in here and I want to center it with the tail piece. I want to get it right in the center and in line with my handle. Once I'm pretty much where I want to be, then I can take my two little runner side pieces and fit them to the side and all the way to the front to where they're touching this plunger. And I've got this tail piece extended to its fullest extent here uh, forward. The one thing I can see is my little side pieces are just a little bit taller than my plunger piece which is good but they're just a little bit too tall I want them to be taller than my plunger piece but I don't want them to be as tall as they are so and it's not much just a fraction of an inch so I'm just going to sand them down till I get a nice fit so that when I put this cap on that I still have movement but there's no play in there uh, it's all about getting the play out so I'll take these over to the sander and just fine tune them. All right, after a little fine tuning, I've got just the right height where it's just, I mean, just a fingernail grab above this plunger. Now, as I said, let's get the plunger in the center of our tailpiece. Take our two blocks and get them squared up and up against the side. And you want everything touching that tailpiece there. And that's where we want to glue and screw these two pieces. Now if you don't want to screw them, uh, you don't need to because they're not there's no uh, real structural or anything. They're just guides. So you can actually glue and then just put a couple of clamps on here on the side. Uh, you know just uh, to clamp it until that glue sets up and dries. Then from there we're going to take our little cap piece and it's going to be flush up against this as well. And we'll just put a couple of little pin nails in there just to hold that in place. And what that does is it just kind of keeps the plunger from wanting to lift. All right, so once we get those on, then it'll be a matter of hooking in the uh, link and then finding the placement on the handle and then drilling that quarter inch hole, and we're done. Okay, now with this glued and screwed into position, your plunger should be able to move back and forth 
uh, in there between those two pretty nicely. Um, if not, just sand it, fine tune it till you get a nice a slip fit, but no play. Go ahead and bring your tailpiece all the way back and out of the way for now. And we can go ahead and insert the pin into the linkage and through that hole that we've already drilled into the plunger. All right, once that's in, go ahead and insert it back into place. And now is where we're going to align the handle and the height of the linkage uh, for this um, where we need to drill our hole. And what we want to do is we want to find out the exact placement. Let me get to where you can see that. We want to find the exact placement on the height to where when we push this forward, we get a nice plunge, so on and so forth. So I'm going to drill mine right about there to give you a number from the top of this base here uh, to the center of my link. I'm looking at about an inch and a quarter. As I said, I think, let me double check that number for you. An inch and a quarter up from the top of the base is where I drilled that hole. Now, <clears throat> On this linkage here, if you remember, I said that there was a small chamfer. Here's the old one from the other press. See that chamfer in there where we cut that angle out? That is on the bottom side of this link. That's so it does not do that when you see as I pull the handle up how it lifts it up. We want this link to be able to lay flat and it can't do that because it's hitting in there. So we need to cut that chamfer out. So I'm going to pull this pin out, I'm going to flip this over, and I'm just going to file that chamfer in there until when I pull my handle back, I want my plunger to stay flat on the base as it goes back and forth. I don't want it lifting up like that. So I'll go ahead and get that chamfer done, and uh, we should be able to call this done. Okay, guys, um, one thing that I did uh, just now was... I made sure that uh, my hole placement was fine, but what I did is on, on the actual handle, I wallowed out the hole a little bit on the handle, not on the link, because I want the pin to fit tight in there, but I loosened the hole up, or wallowed it out, or you know, opened it up a little bit more uh, for the link, so that way I get a nice press and everything, and I stay pretty much down on my base. So. That is, uh, it's going to take a little while for the pins and stuff to kind of, and the links and, and all this movement, a little bit of wax might help on the links uh, to kind of get your movement and stuff, but uh, you can start using this thing right away. So that's the pin press. Um, the last thing, a little touch I'm going to do with it is I'm going to put, I've got some English bridal leather. I'm going to put some leather on both the end of the plunger and on the tailpiece here, uh, the adjustable tailpiece. I'm gonna just put a strip of leather in there, but if you don't have leather or anything like that, you can uh, you can get leather from a craft store or fabric store, but uh, you can use felt or you know maybe even some of that uh, white material you know that they make cutting boards and stuff out of. You can uh, somehow epoxy that on just to protect your pin parts from being marred um, and everything. Uh, the leather works fine for me, and that's what I have on hand. Just use and get what you have on hand. Uh, so that is our pin press, and um, I am uh, I've got two of them now, so I may end up doing a contest on Keep.com if you guys follow me over there uh, and giving one of them away because I don't need two of them. So with that being said, I really appreciate you sticking with me through the entire build. Uh, it um, is a very functional tool, and it'll save you some money from having to buy one. All of this was made out of with scrap wood that was in the shop, uh, hardwood preferably because of the pressure that you're going to be putting uh, when you are, let's slide this back a little bit, when you're putting clamping pressure on this and everything, you want that hardwood to stick up, you know, and stand up to it. You don't want uh, 
the softwood might, you know, give way a little. Uh, you want to be able to put some force on this to press those parts together. It doesn't take a lot to press the parts together, but you know what I mean. So all in all, uh, here's the pin press. Uh, that's how you make it. Uh, I know I went into a lot of detail and stuff, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through step by step. Uh, it's all about fine tuning. Once you get all the parts and everything made, just make sure that you have no play. Uh, you know, like there's no play in my runner. I'm going to wax everything up so I have some nice movement so I can just really quick make adjustments and lock it down. I'll probably wax this uh, here so I have good movement in here. Um, the links are going to wear in over time. So just want to make sure that you've got good movement, no play, not a lot of play, so you get a good accurate press. I hope you enjoy it. All right, now guys, next week there won't be a video. I'm going to take a week off because I have some custom builds that I've got to get out of the way. Uh, and i got to focus all my concentration on them. As well as, my mom just retired. Uh, and she has a Facebook page called MB Things I Know. And it's about recipes and food and everything. Well, now that she's retired and going to have a little bit more time on her hands, I'm going to go in and revamp, redesign her website, get her recipes and all up to date. And then I'm going to set up her YouTube channel for her video blogging so she can talk with her followers and everything. Um, so I'll be taking next week off. There won't be a video uh, this coming Friday, but there will be the following Friday. And until then, I'll see you soon.